This is the only Garmin Forerunner 265 review you'll ever need. We tested every feature, every hour of every day for months, so you don't have to. How to use the watch, what we at Running Shoe Guru found versus the advertisement, major pros and cons, and which type of runner this Garmin Forerunner 265 would suit. Here's what we found. Straight out the box, the first impressions weren't great. It has a cheap look to it. We're talking like a, a matte black plastic casing, and I wanna know why am I spending so much money for plastic? However, I have to admit, the graphics are super sleek on the 1.1 inch AMOLED display. I tested the 42 millimeter option, the smaller option, but what I can't figure out is why the screen dips towards the casing. It doesn't add anything, even aesthetically, and frankly, it just makes it harder to get a protected cover. The straps are made from silicone, the usual deal. They're interchangeable through a pin, so super easy to clean and very simple. The 265 sits flush against the wrist with it being only 12.4 millimeters in depth and it weighs just 39 grams. I mean, I was so surprised at how light it is. It really is easy and comfortable for everyday wear. A little more on using the watch itself. To navigate, you can use touchscreen and the buttons, which are this satisfying click. It's not too spongy, they're not too stiff, they're just right. The touchscreen is also really responsive, even in the rain. There's five buttons, a master run button and a back button on the right, light up and down on the left. And if you hold them in, they all offer shortcuts. So the run button accesses the training profiles, the light button accesses a different menu and the up and down are used to access the watch's features or to just navigate the watch itself. If you wanna add a beep to make sure you're not pressing anything when you shouldn't be, or even worse, canceling workouts, then it's super simple. Hold the up button, scroll to systems, scroll to sound and vibes, hit select key tones or key vibration or both, and you're away. Personally, these absolutely do my head in, so I don't use them and I haven't accidentally started or stopped an activity yet, so you don't actually need them. It has a 20 hour battery life in full GPS mode, 13 days in smartwatch mode, according to Garmin. However, I got more 10 days of smartwatch mode and that's not a huge issue because it charges really quick. We're talking 60 to 100% in like 20 minutes. So I just put it on charge when I'm in the shower. There's 30 sport profiles, four of which are for running. So to be honest, this watch is kind of tailor-made for runners. The, the giveaway is the main run button and the crazy data as well, which we will get into. There's tons of exercises on the app to send to your watch, but what I don't understand is what I found with the yoga workouts. You can scroll through the poses before you click start, but then it doesn't actually take you through the yoga workout. So do I have to remember all the poses? Cause that, that's not happening and that really didn't help. And the choice of training plans is really shocking. There's three options and that's it. I really must admit, I love Garmin's stress and body battery metrics throughout the day. It even suggests which breathing exercises to do to calm me down. Absolutely love that. Please do remove that feature. The sleep metrics are awesome too. The level is on par with their competitors and it even offers a morning report to collect all that information for you to digest as soon as you wake up. Period tracking is also a feature. However, it's done on the app and there's better apps out there like Flow or Clue. So it's not really a feature in my opinion. HRV is perfect terrain in a keen runner who risks overtraining or overdoing it. This feature gives a clear warning of overtraining and advice not to train. Even when you're just about to press go, it's like, don't do it, you need to rest. Reap the rewards of recovery. It takes your rest and heart rate into consideration and suggests what's, what will be best that day. The targets, um, time splits, different pace, all that goes in the morning report. The data for runners available, pace, heart rate, heart rate zones, power output, power zones, um, elevation graphs, training effects, the load, and more is viewable on the app. You can really dive into the stats and get a real clear cut idea of how your body's working when you're going out on a run. Heart rate cannot be read through tattoos. It hinders the entire watch health function. I had to wear the watch on the inside of my wrist 
The 265 really struggled to read heart rate through the tattoos on the top of my wrists. I did check online, an epoxy sticker can help or a Garmin chest strap, but it's not ideal to be wearing that day in, day out. So I just turned the watch around as an easy fix. Struggling to read your heart rate seriously impacts the watch's functions like stress, like body battery, the sleep, and its best feature in my opinion, heart rate variability. It essentially impacts the recovery metrics for your whole watch and that is not ideal. It's pretty obsolete if you can't get the heart rate reading. It, the watch is absolutely obsolete. I found really annoying problems with the navigation as a trail runner. I tend to get lost a fair bit, so navigation is an important feature for me. The 265 offers track back and straight line options to take me back to the start of my own run. Can't think why I would need straight line assistance. It's as the crow flies and that's never helped me out. The track back feature failed on a number of times as well, even on clear cut trail roads, which was quite panic inducing. To test it, I ran a mile, turned round, hit track back, and well, it's not turn by turn assistance. It's just this temperamental compass arrow that keeps changing. I honestly don't know how that helped anyone find their way back. I, I really, really don't. One watch face you can have is a map so I can see that I followed the same route home, but nothing else really helped me get back. Uploading courses are super easy with Garmin, but again, I ran into problems when it came to actual navigation. You know, my route started half a mile ahead, so I used that half a mile as a warm up before starting the actual route. It's an official race course, it's five laps of 10 mile loops, and I haven't had any problem when I've used it on any of my other training watches at all. Um, but once I reached the official start with the 265, it just said ended. And I'm like, what, what do I do now? So I had to stop, reload it, and test it again. I even tried going off track on purpose, but there was no sort of hint that I was off course, other than me staring at the map as I ran, which is not good for races. It's not great for ultra runners or trail runners of any caliber because trail run events are usually less clear than road running events, and you don't want to be staring at your watch for whether it's 5k or 50 miles, you just don't want to be staring at your watch at all. In my opinion, this watch suits any ability runner, perhaps road runners or anyone less reliant on navigation, then this is a great watch. It's compatible with the likes of Training Peak, so you can find a training plan that really suits you and just upload it straight into the watch. Or you can go off the watch's recommendations with its sleep data and its, data and its HRV and all the other data that it gets you to keep fit. Equally, if you're seasoned runner and you want your PB marathon, the metrics are fantastic to improve your performance. It also strongly prevents overtraining, which is a feature I really love. But speaking as a tattooed trail ultra runner, I would seek assistance elsewhere, especially for this price tag. Overall, I would worry about getting lost on a run if I didn't have my phone to help me get back and having to wear it inside my wrist was really risky when it came to damage. There are much better options out there, in my opinion, which don't have that cheap black matte black plastic casing to it, who offer a better battery life, better navigation, workouts that will guide you step by step, and will be able to read your heart rate through a tattoo with just as many running stats. So for that, personally, I wouldn't fork out over $500 for the 265, but tell me what you think. We have more sport and fitness watches to review, so, so like, rate, and subscribe to this channel to keep up to date. Cheers.